Hi, I'm the history guy. I have a degree in history. I love history. If you love history too, this is the channel for you. Today we start with a bit of a mystery that has to do with this World War II naval officer's hat. Inside the hat is a tag that gives the officer's name and lists his duty station as Clearfield, Utah. And that's a bit strange, because why would a naval officer in the Second World War be stationed in Utah, hundreds of miles from the ocean? The answer to that is that the U.S. Navy built a supply depot in Utah, Clearfield Naval Supply Depot, near Ogden. And it might surprise you to know that by the end of the war, Clearfield was the largest naval supply depot in the world. But before we ask why the Navy put a supply depot in the landlocked state of Utah, let's talk a little bit about Clearfield Naval Supply Depot. The U.S. Navy was already in a building phase when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, with nearly 350 major combatant ships. But the wartime production was astounding. By 1945, the Navy was the largest in the world, with nearly 1,200 major combatant ships, including 27 aircraft carriers. A Navy that size requires a huge amount of supply, and so the Navy needed much more depot space where they could acquire, warehouse, and forward food, fuel, ammunition, spare parts, everything the Navy needs to operate to the forward supply depots and the ships at sea. All these new ships and planes and sailors required more depot space to supply them. The Navy built ammo dumps, they built fuel depots, and they built eight new general naval supply depots, including Clearfield. These depots would acquire necessary supplies, like medical supplies or aircraft repair parts. They would warehouse them and then forward them when needed to the forward supply depots or the ships at sea. The construction took just 10 months from June of 1942 until the depot was dedicated, April 10th of 1943. The $37 million project covered 840 acres and required an astounding 159 million cubic yards of new construction. Workers poured 228,000 cubic yards of concrete, laid 40 miles of new railroad track, paved 13.5 miles of new road, and built 48 large general storehouses, 13 heavy material storehouses, and 56 aviation supply storehouses altogether totaling more than 8 million square feet of warehouse space. At its height in 1944, Clearfield took in more than 2.5 million tons of supply, and its inventory was valued at more than three times the value of all other property in the state of Utah combined. Staffing a depot this size was no easy task, as most able-bodied workers were off fighting the war. At its height, the depot employed more than 8,000 people. There were naval officers, civilian employees, a marine barracks that housed the marines who were providing security. There was even a prisoner of war camp with Italian prisoners who had been captured in North Africa and who helped supply manpower to the depot. Female workers became ubiquitous during the war. It was a wartime necessity, but it was a new experience for the United States Navy. When the depot faced absenteeism problems, officers found out it was because the women were leaving during the day because that's when they needed to do their shopping. And so base officers worked with local businesses to extend their hours and opened the base canteen to the civilian workers. Clearly, it was an impressive facility. But we still have not answered the question of why the Navy wanted 8 million square feet of warehouse space 750 miles from the ocean. There were practical reasons to choose Clearfield. The dry climate was good for storage. Clearfield was close to the main line of the Union Pacific Railroad, and Hill Army Airfield was also nearby, making the location a good hub for transportation. But the real reason was the nature of the enemy. After Pearl Harbor, there was a real risk of a Japanese naval attack on the west coast of the United States. Any of our major ports could have been a target, and if Japan wanted to attack a port, supply would have been one of their primary targets. At 750 miles from the ocean, Clearfield was outside the range of Japanese carrier-based aircraft who would have been attacking from the Pacific Ocean. Clearfield was close enough to all of our West Coast ports that it could supply any of those ports in a day by rail, but was itself far enough from the ocean to be safe from Japanese attack. That is the unique role that the state of Utah played in the war in the Pacific. 
Clearfield Naval Supply Depot was phased out in 1962, but it didn't go empty. The warehouse space was taken over by private firms, and today the area known as Fremont Center is a major hub for warehousing, manufacturing, and distribution. Some in the original depot buildings. We sometimes forget that wars are not so much a contest of sailors and ships, but of economies. The great strength of the United States was what Franklin Delano Roosevelt called the arsenal of democracy meaning that we could pool our vast natural resources and energetic population to support our soldiers, sailors, and allies fighting the war. The massive effort at Clearfield Naval Supply Depot is a great example of that strength. I'm the History Guy. I hope you enjoyed this edition of my series, Five Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, five to ten minutes long. If you enjoyed these five minutes and want another five minutes, please click like and subscribe.